Welcome back viewers to what is a very sunny Cairo, it's pretty hot. Um, so yeah, today I don't want to go into too much history because we've obviously done so much uh, ancient Egyptian history. Um, so a bit of a less structured video today where we're going to wander around the streets um, and also you know, get a feel for the day to day, but then I'm also going to talk about some interesting things about this city, about some of the challenges it faces that I've read online and um, you know, just some of my own sort of observations. So that's the plan. Plans have already changed. I was planning on having a wander around this area uh, whilst Amy was getting her eyelashes done. Um, but it turned out it wasn't actually a shop, it was going to be someone's apartment. Um, and so Amy decided to bail on that. Uh, and I'll explain why. It's an interesting segue into uh, something I was going to talk about today. Women are said to face constant discrimination, uh, sexual harassment, um, and even an abuse. And it's so bad, in fact, that a 2013 uh, survey said that 99% uh, of women in Cairo will experience sexual discrimination, um, sexual harassment, sorry, at some point in their lives. So it's a really quite a significant uh, problem here. And they even tried to introduce new laws in 2014 criminalizing uh, sexual harassment, but it's not been uh, hugely successful. In fact, the situation is so severe that in 2017, um, a poll uh, determined that Cairo was the most dangerous city, most dangerous mega city uh, for women uh, in the world. And it's interesting because social media has played a role and there was a famous uh, Instagram account which started to sort of name and shame people um, carrying out, you know, sexual harassment in the city. And it was by a person called uh, Nadine Ashraf in 2020, they started it, and it's called Assault Police. And Ashraf is credited with uh, instigating a kind of an iteration of the Me Too movement here in Egypt. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit dodgy for women in this city. Um, and so as soon as we saw that Amy was going to be going into an apartment by herself, the plan was for me to wander around and talk about you know, the streets of Cairo while she was in there. But Amy said, I don't think I want to go to someone's apartment by myself. But also I was left without a phone and no money. So yeah. if, if, if I was in trouble, I couldn't get away. If I was in a shop, I'd feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah, we've only got one SIM card between, or one SD, sorry, one SIM card between the two of us. Yeah, so, but anyway, the plan remains. We're gonna basically get a few different taxis today, dot ourselves around Cairo so we can get a feel for the different areas. Some of the older areas, some of the more modern areas, and then of course the informal housing areas, um, which ironically is like right next to where I stay, we we're staying in our hotel. Kind of fitting, I suppose. <laughs> so yeah, that's the plan. But before we get started, we need to refuel before we start walking the streets of Cairo. So we're going to a Hawalshi place, continuing our exploration of Egypt's delicacies. <laughs> Taking me by the hand. Thank you so much. So here we have it, Hawalshi. It's basically uh, lamb mints. Do you see that there? Look at that. <laughs> it's basically lamb mints that they fry inside a pit of bread uh, with cheese, onions, uh, bell pepper. And again, it's a really traditional Egypt, uh, Egyptian food. I've got a little plastic uh, glove to put on as well. Where are you putting that, Amy? <laughs> Amy hasn't had lamb in years. Four years. Thoughts? It's like a kebab. Like a, like a kebab? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna grab one of these then. Yeah. Mm. It's crispy. Really crispy. Very cheesy. But yeah. It's got that sort of kofta, lamby. Mm. It's really good, really good. Again, not super healthy. Yeah, highly recommend. This would be amazing if you do it like, on a night out afterwards. <laughs> it's very greasy, yeah, really good. And then you've got some hummus here, and some, or tahini rather. And then we've got pickled uh, vegetables to give it a bit of zest as well. Pickles are really strong. A bit too much for Amy, but I'm loving them. I just had a hole in the dimension. It's spicy and really tangy. There's carrot in here and olives, lemon. 
crust uh, tahini is made from crushed sesame, so it isn't it isn't hummus, which is made from crushed chickpeas, but it has a very similar flavour and also texture. Very full after that. That was kind of a crossover between like a lamb kebab uh, and like a cheesy toasty, maybe. Yeah. Uh, you agree? Um, but yeah, but it was like, really good food. A bit of a strange atmosphere. Like the guy like kind of wanted us out. <laughs> Rushed over with the bill, like after I, as I took my last bite. <laughs> I don't know if he's just proactive or like trying to get me out of there again because I'm recording. I've just got like recording anxiety now whenever I film anything. <laughs> but yeah, that was 156 Egyptian, so cheap as chips. And we're just coming around now to this uh, palace, which is actually a museum. But it's interesting, you can see how green it is. And uh, this uh, lusciousness uh, is something that sort of does characterise Cairo quite a bit, I've noticed. And it's interesting because the city has a real problem with pollution. Um, but having said that, you'll notice that all the streets are covered with uh, trees. They're everywhere, particularly in like the older parts of the city as well, we've noticed. Um, and it really does just kind of cool things down a bit uh, in, in the streets as you're walking under the shade of the trees. Um, so that is one really nice thing about Cairo that we've both noticed. Beautiful palace. That looks a little bit like Buckingham Palace. I was with these that. wonderful, wonderful gardens. Um, but yeah, I thought this would be, as I've just spoken about the trees, um, an appropriate time to talk about the pollution. So like meg many um, mega cities, uh, Cairo suffers from really bad air pollution and uh, the World Health Organization have actually said that the air pollution is 12 times higher than the recommended safety level. Um, so I can start walking around with just walls behind me. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that's because of um, essentially uh, unre no regulation around um, vehicle emissions. So a lot of the vehicles in Cairo, I think it's 60% are uh, older than 10 years. Um, and so they don't have uh, the technology, catalytic converters, etc., to um, reduce the emissions coming out of them. And this is also compounded by the fact that they have a lot of uh, industrial uh, processes releasing um, emissions, as well as chaff and trash burning. And there are actually four and a half million cars in, in Cairo. And it's kind of a bit of a perfect storm, unfortunately, because of Cairo's layout um, sort of amplifies the problem. So for example, you'll notice that all the streets are quite narrow, but the buildings around it are really tall, um, and it doesn't rain. And so it creates a kind of a bowl effect, uh, just sort of trapping um, you know, all the air pollution in one place. Um, and they, they actually attribute as many as 20,000 deaths a year um, to Cairo's poor air pollution. So it literally is killing people. Me and Amy both noticed this, and this is actually what got me reading about it, were, uh, that uh, every time we got home and like blew our nose, especially after we'd like had a, <clears throat> a uh, long journey in a taxi, because they leave the windows open in the taxis, about a long journey in a taxi, um, you know, across the city from central Cairo, we'd have like all black, um, you know, bits in our nose, and like, it's a bit gross, but like our boogers would be like dark gray or black. Um, and that's just from the pollution. Um, we've had it like once before. Um, occasionally it used to happen to Amy when she used to get the tube. So we're heading now to Al Muez, which is in historic Cairo. Um, and it's one of the oldest streets in the whole city. It's actually part of the foundation uh, of Cairo by the Fatimid dynasty uh, in the 10th century. But we're not gonna go into too much history. Just literally, I promise, a couple minutes. <laughs> So historically, this area we're going to is sort of one of the main arteries uh, of the historical city uh, of Cairo and very important sort of economic zone, um, full of kind of souks, which are the markets. Um, and even today, um, you know, there's still a lot of these souks uh, that you can kind of explore, which is what we're going to do. It attracted a lot of um, sort of charitable construction work, um, you know, funded by the elite and the rulers of Egypt. Uh, and so even today, um, it's like a really good example of kind of dense area of kind of typical Islamic architecture, um, which gives it a really sort of unique character. Incidentally, um, Cairo has sort of long been thought of as sort of the cultural and religious capital of this entire region. 
um, and it's actually called the city of minarets a lot of the time and, and minarets are like you know those towers that you see sort of attached to mosques uh, and so I'm wondering like because this is like a tip like a very sort of you know famous Islamic architectural center um, if we'll see loads of these minarets in there I suspect so but right now we are absolutely roasting in here and we're experiencing firsthand what it's like to be in a city with you know four and a half million cars We've, we've moved about 100 meters in the last 10 minutes. It's just so hot. You say it's 33 degrees? Mm. 33 degrees, like but, but in a boiling hot car, <laughs> no air con, the window's down. <laughs> Don't know why. It's uh, pretty hot. <laughs> It's going to take us an hour to get back. It's going to take us a long time to get back. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And All it's right, this way, right? Thank you. Yep, yeah, shukran. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So we found the tourist area, that's for sure. All of them are here. I don't know what I was expecting, really. But yeah, it's just endless uh, figurines of Egyptians. Oh, pharaohs. Oh. But you know, it's just another part of Cairo they're exploring. That was one of the guys that carries bread on his head, except his, he didn't have any bread on him at that time. Minarets, as, as promised. <laughs> and this now is officially the street that we were talking about uh, in the taxi. And immediately you can see the uh, Arabic or the uh, Islamic styling. It's actually quite nice. It's a lot nicer than around the corner. This has got a little bit more upper mar up market. It's actually a bit less touristy on this street. Yeah, there's more locals here. <laughs> It's an old telephone. Oh, nice. yeah, that's cool. That's it, it's kind of cool. <laughs> It's actually really nice around here. <laughs> I'm actually actually surprised how nice it is. Uh, wow. shops around here this one's selling all lovely uh, antiques look how nice all this is it's really nice all these lovely antiques the little girls just uh, asked to take their photo with Amy they, they must be uh, they must be fans of the channel <laughs> which hasn't, hasn't actually been officially released yet they must just be able to see the quality content being produced here obviously Egyptian girls have a really good sense for these things but no, as I was saying yeah it's full of lovely little antique shops it's a shame really because obviously we don't live here but um, you could fill a house with all these wonderful things. There's actually some really nice stuff here. And there's the fresh juices as well. <laughs> you remember from Jordan we had all those fresh juices? That's also an Egyptian thing. Mandatory, mandatory shisha shops everywhere. Are you ready? Shisha shop. More shisha. You think, oh, oh, do they need more shisha shops? Don't worry. Shisha shop. <laughs> shishas do they need? Do you not just buy one for life? Oh, what's this here? Could it be? Oh, I think it is. It's another shisha shop. <laughs> another juice shop. I'm starting to sense some themes here. It's interesting because there's a lot of shops here just selling like, you know, tat, essentially. Like, Canada hats and then a lot of shops selling more shisha 
but then there's some really nice um, antique stores uh, and also this, this whole place is sort of interlaced with beautiful old uh, ancient um, Islamic architecture so it's an interesting place and it's interesting because I think these are the walls I could be mistaken I'll have to check in the edit but I'm pretty sure these are the walls uh, of the old city um, of the historic city but I mean beautiful architecture and beautiful trees it's a really nice area In because now we're on the opposite side of town that we need to be to get the taxi to the next area but um yeah it's interesting there's a there's a few little historic buildings dotted around still but you kind of come out of the old city and you're back into normal cairo surroundings to some extent let's see if we can poke our head in here but inside the wall here seems to be a uh, Beautiful shiny floor, but I don't know if Amy is dressed appropriately. So we had to take our shoes off. Bit awkward because we've still got boots. Amy had to put a headscarf on. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the gentleman is telling us this is the second largest mosque in all of Africa. Which is amazing. Amy is watching herself. <laughs> you're, going, you're going to start to pray, Amy. <laughs> so that small room here. He's saying that this is here for washing yourself before you pray, and that is also a well because the Nile, one after they bought, uh, built this place, moved away. So they still needed something where you to wash themselves. So that would give them water, the well, so they could continue to wash their hands and I think their feet as well before they pray. We ended up going on an impromptu tour. To be fair. Yeah, to be fair, it only cost us a fiver, so yeah. whatever. But um, oh, you didn't understand a word of it, which just goes to show the benefits of watching something like my content online. Bite size. Because I didn't understand a word of what he was saying. Did you? No. no. And I haven't really studied this part of history. This is like this, uh, I was going to say, this is only a thousand years old, only. But, um, uh, yeah, so I don't know anything about this, you know, because we came to Egypt and there's so much to do, so I just focused on ancient Egypt, naturally. Um, I probably understood about 5% of what he said. Yeah, and I knew nothing about Islamic history, so I was trying to bounce off him a couple times, because <laughs> I know a little tiny bit, but not enough to kind of have a conversation about it. So now, we're just walking back down the street, back towards an area where we'll get a taxi, back to the bottom of this road, uh, and then we will um, get a taxi to Babylon, and also go look at Tahrir, Tahrir Square. I don't know how you pronounce that. We just had more fans. Uh, coming up to us, asking if we can have photos whilst we sit here. We're just having a coffee on this road on the way up to the uh, top where we'll get the taxi to the next location. Um, but yeah, two little kids wanted yeah, to, this time, this time. This time wanted uh, both, of both of us to be in the photo because obviously I'm the main content, the face of the channel. The face of the channel. Maybe I shouldn't put this in. I'm not even sure it's funny. <laughs> I've got an Arabic coffee here, Amy's got a nice little tea, and we had a freshly squeezed orange juice, but it had ice in it, so we quickly drank it as quick fast as we could before the ice melted. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have done that, but we're weak. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know. It makes sense to me. I feel, <laughs> like every, to me. I feel like it makes sense to every kind of 11 year old, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just drink it real quickly. Was it, was it only drops on the floor? On the floor like, Three second rule. Three second rule. Five second rule. They wet the floor. Everywhere, everywhere we go, and we're not exactly sure uh, what the reason for that is. 
In fact, yesterday on our road, they were hosing the essentially just the dirt road, like the mud. Um, you're wondering if it's got something to do with the dust. Strange. Why do they do it? I think these go on go on top of the mosque. Is that right? This on, on top of the mosque? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the gentleman's saying they go on top of the mosque. So you'll see uh, this one over here. So this one doesn't have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need one up here. <laughs> I suppose that just goes to show uh, that this really is the uh, city of those towers. I have to admit, I forgot what it was called then. The city of minarets. It just goes to show that it really is the city of minarets. Because they've got the top to sit on all those minarets in every one of these shops. So really near the street now, it's about to get a taxi. But it is... Manic as always. So look here at the German plate. So you may notice that's got a German plate. See there? And that is a Egyptian number plate on front of a German plate. But I've looked online about this. I've seen it a few times. I was wondering what that was about. And I've seen some conflicting information. I'm not, I can't quite narrow it down. So one thing is that they're like secondhand vehicles from Germany. Uh, and the idea is that because you bought them, you know, from a European country, um, you know, they, they, they're likely to have been properly maintained and have like a full service log, if you will. Um, but then I've also seen information that says that they've now just become a bit of a trend. People will purposely buy German plates to put them underneath their, um, yeah, underneath their Arabic uh, plates as a bit of a sort of a fad, a fashion statement. Uh, Egyptians hold German cars, as do a lot of countries, in a huge, with a huge amount of respect and uh, they really revere them. Um, and so yeah, so again it's kind of like the celebration of German engineering. Um, but it's an interesting thing, I've not seen that before in any country. Oh, oh that, one. that one doesn't have one. That one didn't have one. <laughs> just at the gas station and he's filling up with gas <laughs> uh, a literal gas station literal, literal gas station and you can see up there it's 36 dollars 50 36 egyptian dollars the car meant to be moving no the car's not meant to be moving he doesn't have a handbrake um but yes yeah, 36 dollars 50 for a uh, gas operated car it's pretty cheap oh man how much is that uh, a few dollars now we're just driving down the sort of Egyptian version of Oxford Street, which leads us uh, to Tahir Square. Very sh the shopping area. You can see a little bit more upmarket shops than the rest of uh, the rest of Cairo. It's quite nice actually. So behind me here is Tahrir Square and it's really what was the focal point of the 2011 Egyptian revolution and that was really an event that has um, informed you know almost every aspect of uh, modern Egyptian identity um, and also has led to this real sort of anxiety uh, among the Egyptian government. Uh, two million protesters uh, appeared here um, from various sort of socio-economic uh, and religious backgrounds um, to protest peacefully um, against um, the former president Mubarak um, and yeah it, it did get eventually quite violent but by and large it was a peaceful protest but unfortunately 846 people were killed um, and 6,000 were injured uh, but Mubarak did eventually resign um, but what it says today is that you know that the Egyptian government are aware that you know as a, as a collective, the Egyptian people can make major changes in government, um, essentially through force. 
and that's kind of where that anxiety comes from. And I'm sat here on this edge, not walking around doing this too obviously, because I'm half expecting to get rugby tackled by a group of police officers. Uh, I'm not sure what they would think about my comments on this, whether or not I'm damaging the image of the country. <laughs> but it's an important place, so I'm going to wander around and sort of subtly give you some uh, images of it. And I think it was more than just about Mubarak and his regime. It was also about the fact that this country was crippled by um, corruption and struggling economically. And in many respects, it kind of was a uh, the people uh, announcing a kind of a cry for help, a, a demand for change, and it kind of worked. So this is from Luxor. These things, the Sphinx. You can see here. These things are pretty nasty, beautiful, but sharp. And I, I, I said to Amy as we drove past earlier, I wonder if that's on purpose <laughs> to stop people getting too close to it, should there be another mass protest here. It's kind of the perfect analogy for Egypt. Beautiful, but if you look closer, <laughs> not everything is as it seems. And there are guards at each entrance to it, so you're not allowed close to it. You can see the guy in blue. Look, he's just, he looks like a gardener, but he's actually security. I'm running away with my tail between my legs before I get caught out. I got away with that, so I'm not trying my luck too much. I'm not getting too much B-roll. In my head, I was like, yeah, mate, we've seen the Sphinxes. Those are the Sphinxes from, um, what's it called? Valley. Sphinx Avenue. Yeah, Sphinx, Sphinx Avenue. Avenue in Luxor. You know, the one with like the hundreds, well, no, it's thousands, thousands, wasn't it? Thousands of Sphinxes. They took four of them from there and put them around that obelisk. The best four. So, the best four. So we've seen the Sphinxes, mate. That's not what we're here for. <laughs> Little do they know. They think they're we're there for the ancient Egyptian history. No, 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 no. We're here to look at the site of the revolution, my friend. <laughs> So now we're just walking through again, sort of the central area. Um, we're actually going back to that place where we got the uh, Egyptian version of the Bolognese. What's it called again? Um, <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. But you see what I mean about these trees? This is one of the really nice things about Cairo, is they sort of just let them grow. Um, and so you can walk down this street and it's suddenly really nice and shaded. It's beautiful. How nice this is. So cool. I love it, I love it. The back streets are nice. Yeah, the back streets. The back streets are the best. This is probably my favorite area. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so beautiful. This time of day. So beautiful. So here's the conveyor belt where they all do their little bit one at a time. It goes along. Pretty cool. So we've got our Abu Tarot. Uh, it's just an easy dinner for us and it doesn't make us ill. Abu Tarot. It doesn't make us ill, so it's just ideal. Oh, look at that. There you go. Oh, look at his friends. And I think that that's something I wanted to kind of, kind of come across in this video. There's so many different modes of transport on the roads here, and like it's kind of a combination of the modern and the traditional. You get the you know, the little um, mini van buses that are sort of zipping around everywhere, and then you get a donkey walking next to them and a taxi. It's uh, it's a real sort of mix of old and new. You also have to watch where you step. Yeah, or you get taken out by a, an animal or a car. I was going to say because there's all uh, what do you mean? horse crap. Oh yeah, there's horse crap everywhere. <laughs> There's about uh, uh, maybe six different la uh, lanes of traffic we come across on here. Bridge. Yeah, so we're on a four-lane bridge, but there's six lanes. Is it six? I mean, look how close the mirrors are. Four, five, six. Six. Yeah. So we're on a six, six lanes, but there's only meant to be four. It's amazing, like when we talked about earlier about the pollution and the traffic problem in Cairo, how much that's been brought home today, just kind of jumping around different areas and all these taxis. We were going to go have a look at. Um, 
the poor apart, the uh, informal housing, and I was going to tell you a bit about that, but I think we're going to have to do that tomorrow morning because it's seven o'clock now. So we're just entering the informal housing area and first impression is it's actually all right. Like it's quite nice. Um, Amy's just saying it's actually nicer than some of the other areas we've been to. And um, yeah, there's been a, between 1947 and 2006, the population of Cairo exploded from 3 million to 16 million people. Um, and that created a bit of a housing crisis. And so these informal houses um, areas started to pop up and um, they have vibrant communities and ironically they actually sort of solved the problem in some respects because they gave somewhere they gave people somewhere to live but by the same token the government wouldn't countenance um, buildings that weren't constructed under regulation um, so as a result of that there's also you know no government funding and well very little of it i think uh, and also not a lot of services in the immediate area amazingly um, 60 percent of Cairo's people live in informal housing but they only account for 20 percent of the total area of Cairo very cool very kind of similar to where we're staying um, we're supposed to be just outside the informal housing area but it looks very similar oh something wet when I'm on me but yeah all the balconies have little um what do you call like cov covers on them and then little covers to keep all the rain off them and then a lot of them have curtains that they can draw across their balconies so that you can't see in presumably and see women one thing that amy noticed um the other day is when you drive past the hairdressers they have big posters on the window of women getting their hair done is that right yeah um but yeah, that's the idea, the idea of that so you can't see in so because they have to take their hijab off mm. um so you can't sneak a peek as you go past. Okay, should we get up and around? Gonna be honest though, we're getting some funny looks. <laughs> Don't think they get many people walking through here vlogging. <laughs> Um, but I think you can certainly see the style. It's these buildings. Um, obviously, I think the informal areas, they're much narrower streets. And some of them are quite a lot older, like this one. Yesterday, it rained and it was also a bit of a sandstorm, but it only lasted about 10 minutes. But it did this to all the cars. Every car in the city now is filthy. So they only need a little bit of rain and some wind and all the cars get covered in muddy sand. In fact, opposite, you can see the building is covered in the sand and it just creates mud. It must be a real pain in the ass. The whole city, everyone suddenly needs to wash their car within 10 minutes. <laughs> They've all got views of the pyramids on this street. Oh, sorry. All these informal houses have actually got pyramid, pyramid views. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see that? Right at the back there. It's not bad, is it? The highlights. And now we're on our street, back to our street. Amy can get rid of her horrible skirt. <laughs> and you'll see our street, I don't, it's technically on the map that I found online on an academic paper. Um, the journal said that this wasn't an informal area. Amy, I'm just going to film up here a second. Um, but you can see it looks identical to what we've just been you know, walking down. Typical problem with rubbish here. The uh, balconies with the curtains across, the dirt roads, the exposed brickwork. That is what, yeah, that, this is what defines the look of all of these uh, Egyptian streets. And many, most of them, I'd say this whole area looks like this. Um, so there we have it. That's kind of a summary. Um, thank you very much for joining us. It was a really fun video to make this the walk and talk and sort of just explore an area and try and get a summary in your head of what a city feels like as well as me sort of talk about some of the challenges it faces and some of my own observations so i intend to do more videos like this alongside the sort of history ones they're good fun the sort of every day of a country but yeah thanks very much for joining us and um yeah we'll catch you on the next one like and subscribe <laughs>